Welcome to the Not Null Podcast. I'm just an AI voice. But here are your real hosts, Kevin Doyle, Sarah Kimmel, and Bobby Davis. Welcome to this week's episode of the Not Null Podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything tech, from AI breakthroughs to VR's new realities. I'm Kevin Doyle, and this week I am joined by Sarah Kimmel and Bobby Davis. Coming up in this episode, is Apple going to partner with Rivian? OpenAI signs a licensing deal with a magazine publisher. And AI narrated audiobooks have flooded Audible. And then we'll wrap up with our null, not null recommendation section. So this week's first story, let's talk about Apple and Rivian. So this, this just to caveat this, this goes firmly in the rumors category. Nothing here is, is solidified at this point. But it is rumored that Apple is, and I quote, assessing the possibility of teaming up with a certain US EV startup, and Rivian is the very likely candidate. So as we've talked about here before, um, Apple canceled Project Titan. That was their EV project of the past decade and how many, how many billions of dollars they spent on that. They canceled that earlier this year. But seemingly, and this makes sense, that they still want to be part of the EV market. And maybe this is somehow an alternative to making its own car that they can partner with somebody. And maybe somebody would like somebody like Rivian. Here's the one thing I will say, though, before I ask you about this, Bobby. Rivian currently does not support Apple CarPlay or Android <laughs> Auto integration. So this yeah. seems kind of weird. It, they have their own system, and mm-hmm. they, don't, they actively uh, basically tout that they do not support these. They are, it is a choice they have made. So, Bobby, what do you think? Is this a likely partnership? And what do you think each of these companies get out of this? First and foremost, the aesthetic of the car does look Apple or the truck. Rivians do look Apple. They scream how they look. So I I feel like if they're going to pick a manufacturer, they're going to pick one that looks cool. I agree. That's just Apple in general, just knowing how they are. Uh, but But the cars do cool. When I see them on the road, they look cool. They have problems. Can Apple fix the problems? I don't know. Can they add software to the car? I almost certainly they could. Like almost certainly that they would have the Apple in the car and then it would be better than what Rivian has. I have right. No I think they have that. the software like pedigree, don't they, to make yeah. a good product software wise that could go in a car. Right. And then too, if they're just a partner, they don't have the whole problem of like delivering the perfect car. They always, they have a sort of an out while they figure this out. And I think them releasing a purely branded Apple car was just going to be, it could be a hit to the brand if it didn't roll out good. And so now they can just partner Rivian and kind of be the software vendor and then slowly roll out autonomous vehicles, which everyone's having problems doing. But the moment Apple released a car that didn't drive itself, I felt like it could have hurt them. I felt like they thought I saw a risk to the brand. And this is a way for them to not see a risk to the brand. They also have lots of money. Riven needs money. And um, they've got the aesthetic down, which is a lot of the car market, man. You look at the car and you're like, is it cool? Does it work? 100%. It's cool. <laughs> so, you know, so It's unique, isn't it? It definitely has a unique look. What Love it or hate it is certainly unique. I think it's they're way cool. better than the Cybertruck. <laughs> I think they're cool this looking. I, I see them on the road now. I mean, so, I mean, it's fully electric. So... That goes along with Apple. I mean, look at that. It just looks like you could slap the little Apple logo on the front of it. <laughs> you know? I could certainly see this like an Apple edition of it. I think that's yeah, maybe where sure. we, I don't know if that's where we start or where we, I don't know. Mm. I don't know if that's, or, or do they go all in and they just o- overtake the infotainment system, right? Is that where we're going to see it in I all think- of them? Or do we see an Apple edition of one of these? If I was Apple, that's what I would do. I would yeah. build a partnership that's where I don't own the whole thing. I don't have any risk to the brand. I give them some money, but they've got to put my car tech in there. And then you get real world feedback on your car tech. And then you either buy the whole company or you sell the car tech to Ford. <laughs> <laughs> that becomes another question then. Yeah. Buying the company. Is that like, you think that's on the card? Do you think Apple could buy Rivian? They've Would never they? bought a company before. Did I was going to say, that? I don't think there's any precedent for that. They've never done that. <laughs> They've never done that. They've always done yeah. their own. But I think I think they hit a, a wall here. Like making a device, a computing device is one thing. Making a car is a whole nother thing. And these guys can make the car part. Um, and so 
you know, got supply chain issues. I'm sure if you, if Apple owns something, they can, they have partners that they can twist arms on and say, Hey, send us those parts, you know, whereas other people may not have the same kind of swag that, you know, that Apple could probably run in the industry, I would think. So I think it's a good, it's a good idea of all the cars out there. I mean, other than Volkswagen, which absolutely looks like an Apple car too. That's about it. And I don't see Volkswagen ever selling Volkswagen. (laughs) So, you know, um, you know, no, I don't, I don't think they're in that position. So I think this is probably the one car manufacturer they could buy that, that lines up with how they want their car to look and aesthetics and everything. So we'll see. They also need money. And so that makes it cheaper to get. Yeah. I'm sure Ford would be very expensive to get if they wanted yeah. to come and do Ford. Yeah. You know, it's something like that. It, yeah. And, and not to like steal from like the road analogy, but like, why are they just like, just stay in your lane? Like, I don't <laughs> understand the need to branch out into the vehicle space. And I can tell you one reason why stock price. If you look at the stock price the last 12 months, people are saying, how many iPhones can you physically sell? I think they may be reaching right. the proper limit. Yeah. Of, of, and then the refresh rate isn't the same as it used to be. They've got to find something else they can sell. I mean, so. And, you know, the the Vision Pro was a huge success. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that announcement around that, that they, they have a. um there's a there's a what if Marvel series coming out that's going to be exclusively on the Vision Pro, and it's an interactive movie. Interesting, oh, interesting. Which is weird because like it's four grand to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've ordered one, right? So. I haven't ordered it yet, but like I do want to see it. I mean, like I do want to see it. So you know, I gotta find someone I can borrow it from. I don't that's know. Gotta find somebody who owns one. Yeah, yeah. But it's only on the Vision Pro, and so it's going to be an app slash movie and experience, whatever that means. And I yeah. think, but still, man, that four grand to see it, I probably won't. So. Yeah, and like you said, like that price point, like that doesn't justify a one interactive movie granted like maybe there's more coming in the future right but like for now like i'm not spending four grand to see one interactive movie because exactly like nobody's using this product like even the people that have purchased it like there's I, I I don't believe there's never a use case, but right now there's just not a use case for the, like how cumbersome it is. I'll tell you how bad it is. I was, I watch a lot of stock market shows and there's this one guy that I follow. I won't mention his name, but he's like a, he's a historic Apple investor. That's what he's done. He's like, he buys everything. And they're asking about the vision pro and, and the stock market future for the price of stock. And he goes, I bought one day one. He says, where is it today? He says, I gave it to someone more needy. <laughs> so it's like okay i mean this guy has like i don't know how much money in apple so like a lot so uh he just wants to be they've got to find a product that's what all the analysts right. are saying regardless how profitable they are the stock price is driven by future the past is already baked in yeah i don't know what else they can it's hard i'm not that smart so that's why i don't run these companies but like <laughs> I mean, them selling cars could be cool, but it's it's tough, man. It's really hard. I think somebody at Apple has a some kind of desire to make this car thing work. I'm guessing somebody who's Guarantee been it. there for yeah. a while, who like who spent a bunch of money, who's probably part of the project for a long time, who's just like trying to make anything work with this car thing now. It's like He's they just have this with like Elon desire. Musk and just wants to do <laughs> what he wants to do. And you know, Maybe. who cares what anybody else says? Maybe. But I'm also thinking, I think the reason they might be getting into this too is not because it's like it's out of their lane. I think it might be in their lane because nobody's done full autonomous driving yet. I mean, Tesla has it, but it's like it's it is what it is, right? It's not it's not the final product, right? Right. Um, still somebody still needs to crack that. Sure. Um, I think Apple would want to be somebody, the, the somebody to kind of crack that. It's a new kind of vertical for them. Um, I think that's probably one of the desires for them. If they can partner with somebody like Rivian, again, Bob, Bob said, they have the cool factor. Rivian definitely has the cool factor. First time, first time I saw one, I was like, I parked next to one when I went to San Diego last time. 
And I was like, this thing's amazing. Like, it's so cool. <laughs> like, I just have to yeah. look around it. It's very neat. It's the first time I'd seen one um, in person. And um, yeah, they're cool. They have the cool factor. And Apple has that desire to also have the cool factor, right? So it's like, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a mix for them. It's, it's a good, um, um, it's a good meeting of two similar kind of design principles. Yeah. Um, but I've read about Rivian and they do have software problems. Like they said that sometimes you're driving down the road and the seats will just move. <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. I would say that's, that, that's totally safe. It's fine. Yeah. And then the, they've also had where the, 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 the truck has been completely what they call bricked, where they had to like tow that's it. That's a problem. And that's but I would, but I would say I think all EVs have these problems. My Volkswagen yeah. had these problems. Sure, I'd yeah. take my Volkswagen in because the uh, I had to have a safety recall because the doors would randomly open when driving. Like, right. software. B- b- it's because it's software. It's a software <laughs> issue, right? There was no real physical door handles, so it was just it was it was a you know it was a, it's a latch that's it's, it's a button, it's a push button, and something happened with those buttons, and there was an issue with it. It's a software problem, and yeah, the doors would open. Um, it, there was a the problem with bricking Volkswagens as well. It's like it's a common like it's a computer with wheels, right? So like the computer part is difficult, and that's the part that Apple kind of has right or knows a lot about. So maybe that's where they can help with something like this. It's going to be interesting. I, I would be up for an Apple uh, version of a Rivian. I think I would. Cool. I would bet their ten year project didn't fail on the software side, other than the autonomous driving, and they just couldn't deliver on the promise. But I think making the car was hard. I think yeah, yeah, that's just something yeah. they. They didn't feel confident about it. They're like, okay, yeah. we're ten billion into this. How much more? A yeah. hundred billion? I don't know. Maybe we're used to this size. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we can manufacture lots of these iPhone things yeah. Yeah. in China, but manufacturing a full size car is a different ask, isn't it? It really right. is. And this yeah. one's already been done, so now they can just say, All right, let's slap a logo on it, let's put our OS in it, let's integrate with it. And you're right, Kevin. You could see an Apple edition, maybe. That's, That's a- what I think I would be leaning towards. You know, like I remember when Ford Explorer had that Eddie Bauer edition, you know. Right. There's <laughs> there's different ways to incorporate a brand into a car. And and I think you're right with the whole like Apple edition. It just Brilliant. comes, you know, you know what it is? The Apple Edition just comes with the little Apple sticker already in the back window. Right, yeah. That's what it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, the one you got with the iPads or whatever, the iPods. Done. Like, it just, it's already on. It just comes pre-installed. There you go. Apple Edition. That's right. it. <laughs> that's exactly where that's going. It's $2,000 more, but it right. comes pre-installed. And it's got an iPad as the, like, um, the, the navigation. Yeah, an yeah. IPad. yeah, I love it. That's it. Yes. That's all. Yeah. And you, they and you take throw it out. an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> just like pops in and out <laughs> i love this, this or it has like Apple maybe, edition. maybe it's not even that complex maybe it's just like in the middle where you charge stuff it's just like a little <laughs> slot where you slot your ipad in and it just just it just just for ipads you just charge that <laughs> <in there>. <laughs> <laughs> apple edition totally. we'll see I, i'm 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 uh, uh excited to see if i do happens. believe this though i do believe their brand is so strong that if they did have say a ford explorer apple edition I think Ford would sell fifty million on those cars. Like, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, it's just that I just don't. The think- Andy Bauer edition was successful, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shoes and like clothes. You know, <laughs> yeah. they they would sell a lot of them, and just especially if it had their tech in it. Oh yeah. And so, yep, I believe that. OpenAI has apparently signed a licensing deal with a magazine publisher. That publisher being Dot Dash Meredith. That is the magazine publisher that publishes magazines like People, Better Homes and Gardens, Food and Wine, In Style. They have a whole bunch of uh, stuff that they publish that you've probably heard of. Tons. Uh, they, exactly. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, these like mega publishers, right? They own like yeah. a lot of different stuff. There's, there's a few of these, and Dot Dash Meredith is one of them. Um, they signed a deal with OpenAI, and it goes two ways. So this deal allows usage both ways. So this is this allows dot dash meredith to use ai models in ad targeting they have an ad they have an ad targeting product um that this is going to now have ai incorporated into it to make their ad targeting better um the, the claim of this like cookie-less world where ai knows exactly what you want to buy before you even want to buy it that's what dot dash meredith wants a piece of and in return they are licensing their content to chat gpt uh for both training the models and links to articles so if you get a response back that pushes you back to one of their, I don't know, an article from people, it'll give you a link back to that article as part of OpenAI. 
So this follows deals that OpenAI have signed with uh, Financial Times, Business Insider, the Associated Press. So these things are happening as, you know, they're, they're coming, they're happening. A lot of new ones, some old ones. Some others, of course, have just decided to sue OpenAI and not do this. Uh, New York Times, Chicago Tribune, they've just like, no, we don't want to do deals. We uh, we want to sue. So it seems like there's one of two camps that are these that these publishers are in right now, either the get on board and uh, get some money or sue and try and uh, maybe get some money. So, Sarah, let me ask you this question. This might be a load of question. <laughs> this is definitely a load of question. Uh, does this feel like paying for forgiveness instead of paying for permission? Hundred percent, but I do see the like mutual benefits for for both companies, and so is more like, hey, we've already taught our model with all of your content, <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, but here's 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 another here's a carrot here's a a treat for you, um, because I and honestly, I think the more valuable portion of that is what Meredith is getting um with the ad targeting. Like I think that's way more beneficial than what Chat GPT is getting. Um so again that leads more towards like, well here's something we can give you in and thanks for all the content. Um I do also agree though that I think this deal might help um like because with ChatGPT, you're getting the content. Like you don't have to go to the article, but it sounds like this more encourages you to go to the article. Right. And I think that's important just for all kind of content creators in general, where, you know, a lot of content creators that I know are upset with Google because, you know, they you do a Google search, their whole article is right there, like in the AI response, and nobody has to go anywhere for the rest of the data. So um, I think this is going to help a little bit with that. I mean, not a ton, but yeah, I think Meredith is actually getting the better end of the deal here. I wonder which, which who approached who here? Right. I wonder, because <laughs> it's like, you're right. It's our like, data, give me right, something. <laughs> exactly. Was this one of those things like, hey, we're thinking about suing you, but <laughs> what do you, what, but what do you, but what do you got in return? Yeah. Like instead, can you pay us or do we do this kind of like deal where, we can use some of your technology and maybe they pitched it back to them. I wonder which way it went. And also to your point of like putting the links in the things, does it become pay to win? So here's what I think is happening. I think OpenAI is going to just trying to figure out how to monetize this. So yeah. there's so many subscriptions you can sell and how many people are going to buy this chat bot. I, I think we're at the peak of what people are going to use it for. Mm -hmm. So they're going after search and that's, that's, that's the big thing. And so they want to have all the content that they can index and search and they're trying to buy it. Yep. And I think they're going to buy, you're going to, you, you can see it. They're buying all of these things. They're going to buy every one of them. And Microsoft is behind this and maybe they can get around regulations when they only own 50% or 49% of this company, <laughs> you know, which clearly they own it. But like, you know, like, you know, uh, I think Nadella said the other day, if it wasn't for Microsoft, open AI wouldn't exist. Um, wow. I don't know why he said that. But, uh, I'm like, that's pretty bold. <laughs> wow, well, he's right. I mean, they probably well, saved them. I mean, I think somebody else would have would have given them money, and maybe true. not as much. Um, I, I, There's I, only yeah, two I, cloud vendors out there that could really train it at the level they wanted. So, like, they, I yeah, mean, but maybe they could have taken money from anybody, and it could have been less. I think we'd still be where uh, we are. Yeah, Microsoft's not like the savior of the world. There, for <laughs> yeah, they want to claim to be. Yeah, AI Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's Nadella. <laughs> yeah, I think the um. So, but but back to my. My original point, though, Bobby, it, it, they already have this information, though. So mm -hmm. I get that they're going out and paying a bunch of people now for this content. But it also means that there's going to be plenty of people they're not paying, that they've already sucked that information in, right? right. The, the damage is done. Like, right. I think it's just, and that's what made me ask the question around, who do you think approached who? I don't think OpenAI is out there going to publishers being like, hey, can we give you some money? I think yeah. the publishers are saying, hey, OpenAI, you got to pay us. Like, we've, and the ones that are, and they're either, deciding to make a deal with them or they're suing them right. or they want to link to the document. So if, if they say right. we really want search, we need to link back to the physical document while we can produce something like that. We want the actual 
top, what is it, the sexiest men alive or whatever they were yeah. this, the, the person who wrote this I article. I saw that, yeah. Hopes the whole archive's in there. <laughs> well, they actually need to, you know, when was Richard Gere in that list, you know, or something right. like that, you know. So, like, uh, I think that's what they want to know. I mean, and I think that's what they're going after. And so how many of these publishers do they have to get? Should they just include that anyway, though? Yes, what I'm saying, though. Should well, they can, just include that anyway? That's my pay to win question. Yeah. Does that mean that because they're paying, because, because people are part of the, the in crowd, they get their stuff linked back, whereas the other, maybe their competition isn't in there, but they've already sourced their stuff and they certainly used it as part of their, their, right. their training data, but they don't get the link back because right. they're not part of this in group? Maybe. I don't know I how don't. it's going to work out. <laughs> I th but if you don't have the link backs, then you, you're, you're toast. So, like, they're trying the big gorilla here is is Google. Like, can they can they not Google off this search? Can they take 10% of search or 20% of right. search? If they take 10 or 20% of search, Google as a company is in trouble because like that's that's the thing, you know. So like that would really hurt them. And no one's been able to do that ever, really. It's so true. if people believe the chat bot can do it better than the Google search box. And that is one of the current rumors, too, is yeah. that OpenAI is working on something around search yeah. that isn't just generative text. It's right. some kind of search engine that is Google-esque. Well, people already use it for search, even though they <laughs> yeah, don't even though they understand <laughs> that that's not really what it's for. But that's exactly True. what they use it for. Like, they totally search with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they get terrible answers back right. and they're like, and like, and then they go, and then they go sharing that information with somebody like, right. that, you know, that's not true, right? Yeah. Like, Richard Gere was not the sexiest man alive in 1997. It was 96. Yeah. But, right. but ChatGPT has no idea. Like, it just yeah, yeah they're right? just but, putting it together. <laughs> uh, sure. But I do see if you say, hey, write me a marketing article on um, how to plant flowers in the front of my house, you know, and then it says, hey, would you like to do a little research on that? Here's some better home and, home and gardens articles that you might want to read. Totally. See Here's it. my best take on that. But if you want to yeah. like read on it, and get, I could see that. Yeah. Being super cool. Like, oh yeah. yeah. As a consumer, that's awesome. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like Kevin saying, pay to play. Like I'm not going to see a Washington Post article that might no, be not. better for right. my result because they are not the ones that paid. And yeah, ultimately, it's not going <laughs> to matter to the consumer. The consumer won't care. They'll say just. <laughs> They click on the top five links that Google gives them. It's so true. We do. Yeah. I mean, like we yeah. very rarely go to page three of the Google search and go yeah. like, oh, I wonder what else is down here. Right. We don't Well, it, what's funny is I have now been trained to ignore the first like four or five results. Because they're ads. Because they're <laughs> ads. Yeah. And so 100%. I usually kind of scroll down in the middle of the page now. So I think now being number one isn't necessarily all it used to be yeah like first I page can, is the first, first page, page is the thing for sure I agree. Yeah, yeah but if as long as it's on the first page like because i i don't think like there's a lot of times where i've yeah. missed the number one because i'm just scrolling so much further past everything it's true. else it's true if we look at the search now if i just search for rivian look yeah. the first one is sponsored Right. And it's like, while it was the one that I clicked on, because it is Rivian.com, right. I would often, it's if it was my own search, I would usually just ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> and I would go down past the news stories and then exactly. look at what's right here. This, this, is exactly, where, this is where it really starts. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what I do too. And I think yeah. a lot of us have been trained for that too. Because it's also like, because I'm not going to go to Wikipedia or like X or anything like that. I would probably keep right. scrolling and like around here is yep. where I'd really start to click. And we're near the bottom of page one at this point. Yeah, That's, exactly. It's kind of crazy because the stuff up here, yeah, it's like it's a mix of ads and then news articles sure. and then these questions that they've asked. And then you're right, you get to Wikipedia and then Twitter posts right. and videos. Yeah. It's like, look, at we're three quarters of the way down the page before an actual um, like organic link comes up. <laughs> right, but exactly. I think what's cool about ChatGTP is that they can actually change the paradigm here. Whereas like they'll just say, the AI will recommend a article and that'll be the best source of truth because the AI looked it up. Whereas before you want to see eight of them so you can figure out kind of what you're looking for and it can better determine the query, what the query is versus like a key based query. And there's AI back in the go search. I'm sure there is, but like, that's, that's, that's the thought. What they're saying is like, Oh, we can determine better what the article should be. Yeah. 
I don't know if that's true or accurate. What I'm saying is from a product standpoint, people will look at it differently and go, oh, I do need to read that Better Homes and Gardens article. Does it matter? There's another, you don't care if there's another magazine. I just want out to plant flowers. Right. And I think that's, that's where they could win. I mean, whereas Mm -hmm. Google says, here's everything we know about that topic. Yeah. This could be interesting, couldn't it? Because maybe you're going to get like, as you do now in search, you're going to get different results. Maybe the OpenAI search is going to give you their sponsored links and the Google one's going to give you their sponsored links. Right. Yeah. So you're going to get the competitors going to sign up with Google and you're going to get the how to plant flowers from the competitor's product over here and you're going to get this one. It could right. be interesting. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. No one's ever been on a challenge search before and I'm thinking that this may be a shot. Yeah. Which is good for everybody. If you ever buy ads, this is this is what you want. You always want a different ad platform. I don't know if you ever try to buy Google ads. It's like ridiculously yeah, expensive. It is. <laughs> yes. Yes. They tell you to be successful, you need to spend a million dollars on it. Yes. It, a like, year. And they literally do. It's it's crazy. <laughs> I'm yeah. just trying to like, sell um, brooms, man. That I know. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. They just have like a mom and pop restaurant. Can That's I all just... I got. <laughs> Can I find the 50 people around me? Not, not for less than a million. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, oh had, my... we, had, we, we had meetings with Google before and they're like, yeah, it's about 250 grand a month. Just I'm like, I'm like for ads? A month? <laughs> a month? <laughs> like, like, wait, really? Who are we, Ford? Are we Ford? (laughs) Like, what are we? What are we doing here, man? Like, yeah, 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 it was crazy. It was very, very expensive. Yeah. So yeah, competition is good in that space, right? Yeah, that's good. Obviously, Microsoft tried it with Bing before, and obviously they're still trying. They're still there, but maybe an AI-powered version, something open AI based or whatever. Copilot search. I'm sure that's coming. (laughs) You know, they're going to brand it Copilot. It has to be Bing Copilot or something. Um, Search version could be the thing. Yeah, it could be a good product for us as consumers. The other thing I've been noticing too about AI, and this is off topic a little bit, but like I sent Kevin Arkell this morning about Microsoft talking about the things that they're doing. And one of the things they had this little blurb in their article says, contrary to popular belief, AI has increased the number of jobs. And the reason they're saying that now is because they want people to buy these subscriptions where before they were like, this is going to end everything and universal basic income. And they were like, well, I guess I don't need AI then. I guess you're just going to give it to me. So I'll just sit here and wait. And then they're realizing like, man, that's the wrong marketing approach. Maybe we need to tell them <laughs> that you need to use it. You need to, for your job. And so I think that's really, that's going to sell subscriptions. And I think that's ultimately what they need to do. In fact, I don't think you're going to see many replace all coder articles in the future. I think they're going to say, use Copilot to do your job. Yeah. If you don't use yep. Copilot, you suck as a coder. They might say that. That Yes, that's or, the, yes, that's the market. But you're going to have to have Copilot to be competitive in this market. Yeah. But they're not going to say that AI is going to replace the jobs, the coding jobs, because guess what? You don't need. You don't need Copilot if that's the case. You don't need anything. There's nobody that to Microsoft sell it to. Microsoft sells. Yeah. Right. You don't need Visual Studio. You don't need VS, VS Code. You don't need anything. Right. Yep. It's just gonna. I'm just going to type in a chat bot. Yeah. And ultimately, I don't need to do that. I just need to think it, and it's going to happen. <laughs> so, I mean, if you listen to these podcasts, if you run down the road of what these people are saying, like it's just going to show up. Software is just going to happen. <laughs> Okay, let's let's do that. So, That's it. <laughs> it makes me crazy. Time to talk about Audible and AI narrated audiobooks. So last year, Amazon allowed self-published authors to add an AI voiced version of their book. Which sounds like a great product. And since then, forty thousand books and titles have been added to Audible. That's forty thousand titles with AI narration have been added. So. One of the issues here that people have with this, and the, I think probably the biggest issue, and the biggest issue that I'm seeing is that these titles get mixed in with the human narrated books that are also on Audible. So I guess I have the problem with if you're going to Audible and you're going to buy a book, you don't know if it's going to be actual person reading it or an AI reading it. That's pretty bad. Um, human narrators are obviously upset as well because it's taking all of their work, uh, you know, and, which I get. Uh, publisher Harper Collins has a deal with an AI voice company to rate on, to narrate all of their works. Um, this seems good for indie authors, right? Because we know we um, we have a, a Code of Foundry book. Bobby has a book, Breaking the Code, and we had an Audible version created, and mm-hmm. it was expensive. We had a real live narrator, and it was it is thousands and thousands of dollars to have the book narrated because you have to pay somebody to sit down and read through the thing, and it just costs a lot of money. So I get it. As an indie author, you don't have those funds. You're not going to make that money back. It's just something you're not going to do. So having an AI version of it is great. 
great for the author. For the person listening to it, <laughs> maybe not so much. So, Bobby, do you care if your Audible uh, version of the book has an AI narrator or not? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I think you can hear it right off the bat. I, like, I've, my, my best thing is YouTube. So, like, when I'll see a YouTube channel and I'll watch a YouTube video, and the moment I hear the AI voice, there's one that's very distinctive that everyone's using for some reason. It's the same guy, <laughs> same AI. And it's just like, wow, okay, pick a different voice at least. <laughs> you know, um, not the Morgan Freeman knockoff. I mean, like you just pick a different one and they just sound kind of flat and very monotonish. Even though they try to do inflection, it's really difficult to make it sound entertaining as a reader can be. And I would think that our book, well, it's a business book. Um, the guy did a pretty good job. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's well read. Yeah, yeah. You can tell it's human. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, that's and I think Bobby nails it. It's the inflection where an AI can't understand where like to put emphasis and like, you know, and the tone of the book. Um, the one voice, I mean, if it was like if I bought an audible book and it started with that TikTok AI voice, like granted, <laughs> I doubt that's what it that's what's here, but Oh my gosh, I would immediately be so mad that I bought that book. Like <laughs> so so mad cuz I can't even stand it when I'm like going through shorts on YouTube and I come across that like AI voice. I'm like eh, eh, eh. like I don't even I'm, care what your yeah. content is. I am skipping it. I think it's okay to have these, but I agree. I think they need to be flagged. From a consumer yeah. perspective, they need to say that this was an AI they said this is AI narrated. Um and like, like, like you say, you can tell once you get it. There's no doubt. It's just, it's just, if you can't tell that while they are great, they really are good. They've come like leaps and bounds. They are amazing in certain ways. And in certain small segments, sometimes it's harder to tell in a book. You're going to be able to tell For two paragraphs hours. in, you can tell. Yeah. You're five hours, you, yeah. You, yeah. You can tell you a couple paragraphs in, you can tell generally, right? Cause you're wrong. You're right. They'll get the inflection wrong on a word or something. Um, and it sounds very robotic in a couple of places, especially um, for a, like a mystery novel or something like that. Oh, something like that would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. So like I said, ours is a business book, you know, but we sure. do have stories in it, but like, yeah. um, imagine trying to read a Stephen King novel with one of those things. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it would suck. I agree. It, it would, would suck. Suck. <laughs> but you know? I think the thing is it's here to stay because like I said, um, indie publishers, who's publishing through Amazon's uh, uh, publishing platform, they don't have the money to pay a real person to read it. So we're, we're in this, like, we're in a two-tier system, whether we like it or not. There's, it's here to stay. There's going to be AI narrated material, mm -hmm. and there's going to be real narrated material. Yeah. Like, that's going to stay, because ultimately, people will still want, like, some popular books read by a real actor. Um, mm -hmm. I was just, just this week, I discovered... Um, Tom Hardy reading children's books. If you've never seen this, <laughs> please seen go that. listen to this. It is peak internet. I <laughs> kid you not. It is the guy is a master and he's reading literal children's novels, but it is amazing the way he does it. Yeah. It is so good because he's an actor. He's yeah. a person. He has tone and it's just it's so good. It's just everything about it is genius. AI will just never get there. But you indie publisher ain't going to pay Tom Hardy to read the book. <laughs> so it's like you have this two tier thing. I think you're going to get mass produced just like you do everything, right? You get mass produced something that a lot of people will consume. And then you get the handmade, like bespoke niche product that people also want to have. And that's what we're stuck with. So let me ask you guys another question on the same topic. When do you think an animated feature will be voiced by AI? Do you think they'll try that? Like Ooh. Pixar, I think I, th Disney, I think people Disney. will try it, but I don't think Disney or Pi like I don't think Pixar, Disney, DreamWorks, like those big ones. I don't think they will. And he like here's the reason: a lot of the draw to some of these movies is who is voicing it. So Good. like you know, Chris Pratt is voicing like Lego dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go see that because I like Chris Pratt, not because you know it's kind of like if you're going to pay just random actors to be in your movie, it's probably not going to be super successful because <laughs> nobody knows who they are. And so yeah. I don't think any of these big studios are going to do that for like, 
Um, Lion King two and a half, maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Straight to video. Yeah. Like <laughs> Come on, Disney Plus now, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I yeah. I couldn't see them like playing around with it in those scenarios yes. because they're already replacing the like name brand actors with randos anyway. Like, and so it already sounds to everybody like that's not the genie, you know. But yeah. I wonder if they, they have the same rules though as like um like regular actors because don't forget there was the whole pushback last year from sag and those guys around ai yeah. like replacing them so i wonder if like there's going to be an issue with that too i'm not sure any big company is going to want to be the test case <laughs> i don't think disney want to be the test case right for being like all the actors <laughs> exactly yeah. right because the, 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 it's it's a gig for them that they're not going to get it's a voice acting gig that real actors were getting even if they do start messing with it and they put something out i think there's going to be some pushback yeah i really do I wonder if they'll do um, so while they want to mess with and, it and say, "Hey, I can get you in for like a, a four-hour session. We can do the whole movie with with AI. Yeah, and still get paid." And I was wondering about that. So just like, train you know, it Chris, with my voice. Chris like... Pine comes in and reads, mm-hmm. you know, you know, four letters or whatever it is. Yeah, four. <laughs> so, so you know. And then I wonder, suddenly, I wonder he they comes in for that. thirty minutes. He's like, blah blah blah. Yeah, Give me $1 my million, million, million dollars. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if they would. I wonder if they would do that. But I wonder if they'll also be allowed to do that as part of like their contracts with being in SAG and all that kind of stuff. Right. I don't think oh, they would. That's true. Well, they might want to. I don't yeah. think they actually could. Because yeah. I, I just don't think it'll ever like. So I'm a video game player. So I played Arkham's the Arkham Knight series, and Mark Hamill voiced the Joker. I don't mm-hmm. think anyone could ever do that as good as he did. No, I will ever reach that. No. That is peak performance of a voiceover a character. Yeah, my my husband has often like played parts of that for me. Like, it's oh my peak. gosh, Mark Hamill is amazing as the Joker. Yeah, it's it's insane how good he was at that. Like, you know, and yeah. you just yep. you know, he just owned that. So, like, I I just don't know, man. I wonder though if there's going to be a lot of backlash to readers uh, if if readers reject this. Harper Collins will have to back off and do it, regardless of what the price is. They'll go agreed. Yeah. No one will buy your Audible book if but, you use But it depends, though. There's this, there's this balance of, yeah, but there's this balance of, um, do I want to pay $10,000 to have somebody read the book if I'm only going to sell $2,000 worth of the book? Right. Like, there's this, you know, it's, and the answer's yeah. going to be no. They're just going to say, we'll just give the AI voice, or just, we don't have an Audible book. Right. Yeah. Or voice it yourself. Like, can you, you can read it yourself. You can. They asked me if I wanted to do it. I'm like, I, I take it. <laughs> Bobby's like, hard pass. <laughs> so I'm not famous enough anyway. So, like, no one cares if I read it or not. There, you know, I did get a lot of questions early on. Did you read this? Is this you? I'm like, you watch me on YouTube. I was like, have you me. heard my voice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not me. yeah. I'm well, from well, North Carolina. You well, can yes. hear it's, it. <laughs> we did. To be fair, though, we did pick somebody with a Southern style accent. Oh. Nice, perfect. So, Good job. Yeah, but it did didn't that. sound like you. I mean, we picked we 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 intentionally picked somebody who sounded like it could be Bobby, right. but was a very different voice, a very For different sure. tone. So. Yeah, yeah. So I I think you're right. Like back to the initial discussion, they need to be tagged like somehow. Yeah. This is an AI red voice. Yeah. Because like I said, if I get like two paragraphs into a book and I realize it, I'm gonna be pretty mad that I bought that book if I hate yeah. that voice. I because I, mean, I, I also think too. listening to an entire book is different than I'm okay with like, and I've always been okay with like the AI reading of news stories and those kind of things where it's like a few paragraphs. It's like it's it's under five minutes of text or something. It's reading to me. I'm good with that. A book though, not it's so much. It's though. Too the much. book is performative. You right. Know? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. There's something in the book that isn't just like regurgitating a news story. You're right. It is. It's 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 performative. That's it. Okay, time of the week to talk about recommendations then, and no, not no recommendation section. And Bobby, I have you up first, being as you're next to me on the list. All right, so I'm playing Xbox Play a lot, and I've got a pair of... What? Yes, i got a pair of expensive... <laughs> well, I don't play Xbox, I play on computer, I should say that. But I have a very expensive pair of headphones, and if you play a lot, sometimes the covers will come off the headphone. And while you could go get a new pair of headphones for $400 or $500, my covers have come off, and then the foam will start to detach because there's no cover on it. So I found these replacement covers. It's just a little elastic band that goes over it. Works like a champ. I was surprised. I, I bought this on a total whim, like maybe it'll work or I'm getting a new pair of headsets. You know, it's been $18 and it, it totally works. It fits just about anything. Um, works really good. Comes in two sizes. I bought large because I have a, a really big 
over the ear set. It works good. I was excited. I was I was pleasantly surprised. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and these are universal. I see. So yeah. fit over most. It's just got a little like elastic candy. band around it, and pop it over, and it'll hold the foam on there, and you know, a Does little it glue the on sound the foam. That you can notice. It's just that? a very thin piece of cloth. So no. Oh, okay. It'll it is work. something that I've yeah. So I have a um, I've had two different sets of um, Audio Technica M fifties, mm-hmm. and the the ear buds or the ear like cups have worn out on them both. Eventually, I play um, I have an electronic drum kit, and I'll use them on the electronic drum kit. And you, you you're moving for twenty minutes or something, you just get a little bit sweaty, and like the sweat like eventually just ruins those ear cups. Yep. Um, yeah. So you just got to buy new ones. And you can buy new ones, but this would have solved the problem. <laughs> you just put it over and it's a little elastic band. It works great. If Paul was here, I would have said, I don't think they're waterproof, but you know, maybe. <laughs> they might be. I don't see a picture of somebody in the bathroom with them. So is it the. Uh, Poor Paul. It says dry comfort. <laughs> dry <know>. comfort. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Paul, look, they've tested it. Highly for you. absorbent. <laughs> Drying material. <laughs> That's amazing. He's not here to defend himself. I know, it says just for Paul. There's a little like asterisk. We should just buy him some of these yeah. and send him some. Like, I think that's Paul. This, this in that picture there. That's Paul yeah, right exactly. there laying it on the bag. There, so. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to buy another headset, Paul. We've got you covered. This this will save you. <laughs> the that's only awesome. downside I will say is it didn't come in Coder Foundry orange. So I was uh, hoping that it would come in some kind okay. of orange, but there's what, no orange. What color did you get? Black. Black? Okay. Just the standard. Okay, Sarah, what you got this week? So I have a null and a not null. Oh, it's awesome. like same pr- same type of product, but um, one sucks and one doesn't. Oh, I like these. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So um, I I'm from Oregon originally, and um, I, I'm supposed to care about the environment. I don't a ton, and I go through a ton of paper towels, right? And so I've been kind of feeling guilty about my paper towels. And I got an like an Instagram ad for these Marley's Monsters. If you want to type in Marley's Monsters, yep. like paper towels, right? Got an Instagram ad. I was like, huh, this looks interesting. Looks great. Um, yeah, look, there's a sponsor. <laughs> but yeah, on paper <laughs> towels collection, like, and like, it, anyway, they suck. They don't absorb anything. <laughs> it's they look like, cool. They look cool. It's like I'm taking like, you know, like your flannel shirt or whatever. And like you put your flannel shirt to try and like wipe something up. And like, okay, it just moves the water around. Like, yeah, it's not like it's not absorbent. Like and I'm like, okay, well, maybe if I wash it a couple of times. No, these things do not like absorb water it just like moves them around i'm like that's not gonna help me like kick my paper towel habit so what's it made out of polyester or what is it made out of? i don't know what it's made out like maybe you can see um but it feels like flannel like like a, a mm. thin flannel shirt like it feels yeah, like a not thin... very observant. no it's terrible I'm like this like seriously it feels like a thin flannel shirt so um, I recently bought some geometry towels and I don't know if you've heard of geometry towels, but your wives will like be obsessed with these towels. If like they're, that's their big seller is the tea towels. Um, and these things are just soft and absorbent and just amazing. Like anybody who uses these towels, like Mother's Day collection, look at that. So you guys get your wives something for Mother's Day. <laughs> you got a couple days, right? So um, I'm looking at this. What's a tea towel? Is it big towel? Or it it? Kind of. It's like for the kitchen and it's like probably like this by this. Oh, okay. Like, and it's like, you. so I have one over my like um, uh, oven, you know, like so I can like yep. dry my hands, like or wipe my hands off with something or wipe something off or dry a, a dish or whatever. Or like okay. put it over like dough if you're like trying to rise dough and stuff like that, okay. right? So that's like their bread and butter. But they have, if you go to the kitchen, they have like paper towels that are not paper towels. Oh. Um, okay. These are exactly what I thought the other thing would be. And these are amazing. So they are absorbent. They like, they kind of feel like paper when you first like get them, but they're thicker and that like they soften up like as you like wash them but like 
this is what I was hoping for. Like, cause I was using the tea towels and I was like, I wonder if geometry has like paper towels too. Um, and they do. And they're amazing. The designs are very cool. Yes. Yeah, for I'm sure. I'm a fan of the designs. This is cool. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, don't get the Marley's monsters. <laughs> so terrible. how do you clean these then? You just, you just put them throw in the washer in the, or you just hand wash them? Yeah, yeah, just throw them in the washing machine. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And much cheaper. Half the price. More than half the price of the other ones. Well, the other one <laughs> like comes with a lot more, I think. Like Okay. Like okay. it's a whole like roll of them um, that you get with the other ones. Okay. But, okay. But yeah, but yeah, but so it's a microfiber, exactly. is that what it is? Uh I assume it's some sort of microfiber. Could you use this in the gym or anything like that? Well, they have like other types like like fitness. fitness. Let's go to they fitness. Have, yeah, I'm go sorry. to fitness. <laughs> They have fitness towels look specifically for the gym look, Bobby. You don't need to buy one of the other ones. Oh, there yeah. you go. I want that core one right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Got orange on it. That's Hold it. On. Right, it's right. More orange down here. Look. Hold on. Yeah. Like, so like I said, like these towels are amazing. I just bought a, a bath towel. I, like it's come, it's actually like at my house right now. I can't wait to like go home and like see it. <laughs> You're like, I need to go home and shower real quick because I got a new right. towel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to use the towel. <laughs> I want to use my new towel. I can see you with this one, Bobby. This looks, this looks like you. Yeah, it's, man. Uh, pink checkers. Pink checkers. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So geometry. Anyway. I've never heard of geometry. So there you go. Huh? Yeah, I mean, and you can find the tea towels at like, you know, local stores too. I think like Whole Foods oh, really? or something might sell them. Um, I know like my... My local, not Whole Foods, but like Whole Foods knockoff um, here sells them, sells the tea towels at least. Um, so yeah, you can find them locally. Okay, my pick for this week, I am going with the shiny brand new iPad that we have not yet talked about as a story. Oh, but, that's uh, true. Wait, like, there was an announcement. Um, I didn't even know. Yeah, there, the there was an announcement. Um, new, uh, new iPad Pros. So I have ordered one to replace my, my I'm gonna, I had a fourth generation ipad pro so it was an old a12 i think or a14 chip something like that but the old um apple silicon chips this now has an m4 in it so it's you know it's a 2000 what did i get but i think i have a 2020 model as well one so it's four years old now so it's you know getting a little long in the tooth so it's time for a new one and this one came out so i'm crazy excited for a couple of things yes it's thin okay slightly new redesign the screen i'm excited to see the screen the screen looks amazing it has two stacked oled screens oh, so it's wow. the first of its kind with screens so it's like supposedly super super bright who's i mean what kind of device do you need to put two oled screens in it stack them <laughs> like what kind of technology is this like um so yeah it's supposedly super cool super powerful and the fact that it's got an m4 in it is insane like that in a in a portable product seems crazy the 10th generation ipad now too by the way 350 bucks pretty much a steal like that the, the 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 price reduction now on to get one of the what was the the best tablet on the market a couple of years ago now for that price is craziness yeah like that's that's such such a good deal um yeah a new uh new ipad as as well but i want the pro one my pick for this week is going to be the the ipad pro even though i don't have it yet <laughs> <laughs> but maybe 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 my pick is ordering the new ipad pro because it's cool <laughs> We'll see how that good works. it is when it gets here next week. Right. <laughs> Maybe my pick next week will actually be the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> when I've done an initial review. Um, yes. But yeah, I went for the uh, spec wise. I did the 11 inch one, not the giant one. They do a 13 inch one now too. Um, wow, that's and like I went for the laptop. <laughs> yeah, it's massive. It's a yeah. giant screen. I don't know if I could handle the big screen. I don't know. I just, yeah. I don't know. I like the, the handheld size. 11 inch feels right. Yeah. Um. And I went for the one. They have two coatings now on the glass of the regular glass. And they have a nano coating one, which is a matte screen. Mm. Um. Which yeah. I didn't go for. You pay extra for it, and apparently they warn you against cleaning it with certain types of cleaning cloths. Even. Yeah. You have to have a special cleaning cloth to clean it. So I'm like, ah, it's too finicky for me. I, I don't even put a case on the damn thing. Like, I, you know, I, I don't look after it like super look after. I want it. To, I want to use it. I don't want to like, you know, baby it everywhere. <laughs> so you know, I just want to spray something on it and clean it. Like my sure. whatever that cleaner is that I use. So, <laughs> so I went use with the, the Apple branded geometry towel. That's it. <laughs> yes. 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 It does come with one. You have to buy one extra, but oh. you know, still. <laughs> Can you imagine losing it? Be like, I need to clean my screen, but I haven't got an Apple cleaning cloth. I'm going to go buy another one for whatever they charge for it. I have no idea. Probably $40. No way it's that special <laughs> where it has to have like an Apple. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Apple, but. <laughs> 
you but have to I buy mean, the Apple one. Right. <laughs> you have to buy the one with the little Apple logo on it. It's got oh a, yeah. It, it'll know when you don't have it. <laughs> I, it's I, like, damn it, no, no. <laughs> There's a chip in the cloth that knows yeah. when it's cleaning it. <laughs> I decided not to go for that one. I just went for the regular one. So yeah, so we'll see uh we'll see next week. All right, my final note is yeah. I just yep. spent a hundred dollars at geometry. Did you so, really? Yeah. I'll come back next week and tell you if they're any good. Yeah. So, like, uh... Dude, like seriously, I want to hear if you love them or not. Well, that is it for this week's episode of the Not No Podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us for this long. If I could ask you to do a couple of things, if you could leave us a rating and a review somewhere, wherever you listen to your podcast, that would be amazing. And if you could tell somebody about the podcast, that would also be amazing. Like tell them it's the greatest thing you've ever listened to. Um, actually, don't because they might be disappointed. If you tell them that. <laughs> Let's manage just, expectations here. <laughs> exactly. Just tell them it's okay. <laughs> Maybe they'll listen to it, and then they'll be blown away. <laughs> exactly. Actually, tell them it sucks, but they should listen anyway. <laughs> You know, we'll set the bar here and then maybe we'll just stop here a little bit. Perfect. Sounds great. Um, yeah, you can also drop us an email. Where can they drop that email to, Sarah? <gasps> the Not No Podcast at AOL.com. That is it. The Not No Podcast <laughs> at AOL.com. And we will see everybody next week. Air Force is right. Air Force is right. Air Force is right. Air Force is right. Whispers in the wind, stories come alive. Forty thousand tales on a digital dive. Voices not of flesh, but of AI's craft, bring into our ears the future's draft. In the echoes of the night, hear the pages turn. The our voices rise, so much to learn.